Today I'm going to do a quick video of acetates, especially in the context of perfumery. Um, and I'm going to be explaining what they are, how they're made, and roughly what they smell like. You may have heard the term acetate come up quite a lot in perfumery. Um, lots of different materials have acetate at the end of their name. For example, there's amyl acetate, benzyl acetate, geronyl acetate, linalyl acetate, octyl acetate, vetiviral acetate, and the list goes on and on and on. So what is this acetate thing all about and why are there so many of them? Well, acetate is actually a concept that comes from chemistry and acetate is actually a structural group as such and it all stems from something which is called acetic acid. Now, what acetates are, are actually esters, which you might have heard of if you've done chemistry. And esters are basically condensation products of an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. Basically what that means is when you take an alcohol and you take a carboxylic acid, which is a certain type of chemical, and you combine them together and remove water from it, what you get in return is this thing called an ester. Now an acetate is a certain type of ester where the carboxylic acid which you use is actually acetic acid. So I'm gonna try to draw this out for you to explain it a bit better. So firstly, we have something called acetic acid. Now this is a very simple carboxylic acid. And the carboxylic acid part is this double bond oxygen and single bond to the OH. If you don't understand this chemical notation, be sure to check out my video on understanding molecular diagrams and perfumery. Um, after watching that, you should be able to understand what's going on here. So what you would do is take this acetic acid and you mix it with some kind of alcohol. So an alcohol would have an OH and then you can have anything on the end of that. So for example, um, we could have this on the end, but this, the tail could be anything, which is why so many different things can make these acetates. So what happens is you go and do a chemical reaction and you take out one water molecule. So if you like to think about it, a water molecule is H2O. So you've got one of the H's here, and then you've also got an O and an H from one of the other molecules. If you take off these end bits and join together what's remaining, then you get this thing over here, which is essentially the same thing as before, but this time they've been joined together by taking out that water molecule. So this new thing that we've got here is an acetate. In this case, it's butyl acetate. But the, the key thing is because this alcohol could be anything with an OH on, this means we could have any number of different acetates, which is why we find so many different ones in perfumery. Now, if you're interested in the chemistry behind this and how this reaction actually works, I will put a link to a nice organic chemistry explanation of the mechanism. However, I don't wanna cover that in the video just because without a bit more background on how mechanisms work in chemistry, it's probably gonna go over a lot of people's heads and I don't really want to do that. Okay then, so now we know what an acetate is. Why do we wanna use these maybe in perfumery? Now, this is a good case of how a functional group, so in this case, the acetate group, which is a chemical group, can have a characteristic smell. So I find personally that molecules which have an acetate in often have a slightly sweeter, slightly more fruity nuance to them. Um, maybe a little bit of a chemical nuance as well, but in general, they are often a bit sweeter and a bit softer than the original alcohol which they were derived from. So I'm gonna illustrate this with a few examples of different acetates that I have. I'm gonna firstly talk about the alcohol which we had before, and then I'm gonna talk about the acetates which we had after the reaction was done. So the first one I wanna talk about is cis-3-hexanol. Now, cis-3-hexanol is an alcohol which is the characteristic smell of freshly cut grass. So this is probably one of the most core perfumery ingredients which almost everyone knows what it smells like who's doing perfumery, right? So an interesting example of doing the acetate is we can now take cis-3-hexanol and then we can go and add an acetate group on the end. So I'm just gonna draw this out here. 
and we put the acetate like this. So now you can see this new bit we've added on the end is the same as we had before. The acetic acid is joined on. Now, while cis free hexanol smells of fresh cut grass, cis free hexanol acetate, I find still smells of fresh cut grass, but in addition to the fresh cut grass smell, it also has this kind of fruity banana kind of smell also to it. So it's a bit like by adding the acetate in this case, we've not changed the smell from one thing to another, but we've kind of kept the smell the same. And then we've also added in this extra component, which is the acetate component to the smell. So the next example I'm going to show you is dihydromersinol. So this is dihydromersinol. Now this is that characteristic kind of 90s men's aftershave, uh, fresh watery scent. Once you smell it, um, you'll definitely recognize it. But again, we can make this one into an acetate. Um, and the dihydromersinol acetate, again, does still have some element of the watery freshness, though I think it's a lot more dulled this time. Um, but it has this very characteristic now acetate kind of smell. It reminds me of some other acetates like linalil acetate, for example. And when I say this acetate smell, it's hard to describe, but it's kind of soft. Um, in this case, I think a little bit powdery, a little bit fruity. Um, it's a bit sweeter. It's also got this kind of chemically kind of edge to it. So again, this is a, another example. So for the third example, we've got geraniol and geranil acetate. So geraniol. So geraniol looks like this and geraniol smells like quite a floral molecule. It's very much something that smells like rose. It smells like geranium um, and it smells a bit like citronella, that kind of insect repellent kind of smell as well. But I would say overall it's quite floral. And then you can also change it to an acetate. So if we draw it out again, but then this time we add in place of the alcohol group, once again, the acetate group. So now it smells still floral, um, but it's a bit more sweeter, a bit more fruity, and it has got this kind of chemical, um, I would say almost like a mineral kind of element to it. So a case where I find this useful, for example, is say I've got a perfume and I wanna make it say smell in some kind of floral direction, but I don't want it to smell strongly floral. I just wanna hint at that. Especially if you've got other acetates already in the perfume, um, so one acetate can kind of blend with the others through its acetate part being similar. If you put in some, for example, general, general acetates, you can get that kind of implication or that kind of pushing this smell slightly towards something a bit more floral like a rose without having to actually go and dump a load of rose in there making your whole perfume smell like a rose. So I think it's quite interesting the way that you can use the acetates just to kind of blend with each other and add this kind of pleasant fruity lift to the perfume and give a hint of whatever the acetate is actually a derivative of. So other examples, I won't draw them out, but I have linalol and linalol acetate. In the case of linalol, um, this I think is quite a soft aromatic kind of smell. It does smell a bit herbal, but also a bit uh, kind of floral, um, quite smooth at the same time, kind of almost a little bit green. The linalol acetate, on the other hand, still has this kind of soft um, freshness that linalol has, but instead of this more aromatic herby side to it, I find it's a lot more of a violet, like a kind of violet flower. So definitely a bit sweeter um, and a bit more, just a bit more warm in a sense, a bit more something that's a bit less harsh, maybe a bit softer, a bit more inviting. So it's interesting just to see that by adding an acetate group, you can create these effects. Okay, so what am I really trying to get at overall then here? Well, not much really, to be honest, but basically it's just, if you didn't already know, what an acetate is, is it's just the structural pattern that you can find in molecules and you get it by reacting this acetic acid with any kind of alcohol which you want. So when you take one of these fragrance molecules with an alcohol group 
and you react it with your acetic acid to make an acetate, what you generally get is another fragrance molecule coming out, which usually bears quite strong resemblance to the original alcohol to begin with, but usually also has this kind of slightly modified smell due to its acetate group. Now, the modification is usually this similar modification that makes things smell a bit more fruity, um, a bit sweeter, a bit softer. And sometimes you can use this as a way to bridge different things together. So for example, if I had some geraniol and then I mix it with some geraniol acetate, often those two things are gonna blend fairly well because they're close to each other. Again, if I had dihydromersinol and I blended it with some dihydromersinol acetate, they're quite close, so they're probably gonna blend well together. If I had two acetates, for example, geraniol acetate and dihydromersinol acetate, because they've already got that acetate group in common or that acetate kind of smell as well in common, there's a good chance again that they're gonna blend quite well together. So that's it really for me. Quite a short video I know, um, but I just thought it'd be interesting to go over this kind of thing because I know some people are interested in the chemistry side of things and how the structures of molecules can actually affect their smell. Let me know if you like this kind of blackboard style of video or if you prefer the normal videos with a camera. Uh, to be honest, I couldn't be bothered to set up the camera and everything today and do all the editing because it's super cold outside and super gray, and super rainy. However, I'm sure I'll get back to that soon. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video and be sure to subscribe for more videos on perfumery. See you next time.